Welcome to another video in the SOLIDWORKS Formula SAE tutorial series. In this video, we'll be covering the topic of SOLIDWORKS motion. The example part we'll be using is a suspension corner, and we'll be tackling the project of how to analyze the suspension as it goes over a simple bump. I've opened up one corner of my suspension assembly, and first I'm going to walk you through exactly what parts I have here and how they're made it together. The main components are first the unsprung wheel assembly, which you can see highlighted in blue. The next portions are part of the connection assembly, the tie rod, the lower A-arms, and the upper A-arms, and then also the pull rod in this case. This may be a push rod in your suspension setup. The final components are related to actuation, the bell crank, and then also the shock assembly. It should also be noted that I've removed a lot of the unnecessary components such as braking systems, some systems related to the hub, and the spring of the shock. These aren't necessary to perform this analysis, and if you'd like to add them in later, it's your choice. I've gone ahead and mated everything up just like it would be on the actual car, and then I've left the piston and the shock unconstrained from one another, so when I move the tire up and down, it actually moves the entire assembly, including the piston, inside the shock. For most of the mates here, I've tried to use origins and reference points as much as possible. The motion analysis package can be fairly complicated and also will fail if you have too many redundant mates. In order to prevent myself from having these issues, I always like to stick to very simple basic mates and relate them back to the original suspension geometry using points. Here you can see my original suspension geometry sketch. I've tried to relate as much as I can back to this original sketch in the model and use these points as mates. As you can see when I move the model up and down there are anchor points and these are actually directly tied to the original sketch. Once again I want to emphasize how important this is. You need to be using exact mates for motion analysis to work. If you're just using mates that make things look right on the screen you might run into a lot of problems later and it'll take a lot of digging to find out which mates are actually giving you the issues. The last thing I want to do before I jump into motion analysis is to show you the static camber on this specific suspension. In this case I brought up the planes for center line, ground, and the front plane of the tire. Using the measure tool, I'm able to see that between the front plane of the tire and the center line of the car, there is actually one degree of static camber. Starting to use motion is very simple. Just click on the motion study tab down at the bottom of the screen. By default, there should be one already included with every part and assembly. The first option we need to select is what kind of motion study we want to do. If I click this tab over here, it says animation, it will bring down a drop down menu. The default options are animation and basic motion. There's actually a third type, which is the one we're going to use called motion analysis, and it's not included by default. In order to activate it, you must go up to the Office Products tab in your Command Manager, select SolidWorks Office, and then select SOLIDWORKS MOTION. Activating the motion add-in allows us to perform one more type of motion study, motion analysis, which is the one we'll be using here. In order to simulate the bump, we're going to need to add some method of actuating the suspension. In this case, we're going to add a linear motor, which is this little yellow button right here above the timeline. This will bring up the motor dialog box. In this case, I'm going to add a linear motor, and the component that I'm going to move is going to be the actual shock. We're going to be actuating the shock through its travel and then seeing how the wheel responds. For the motion of the motor, I'm going to select oscillating from the drop down menu. One inch of travel is the default and that's fine here, as is one hertz the frequency. Before you click the green check, remember, check the red arrow on the screen. This will tell you the direction the motor is going to move in and make sure it's pointing in the right way. When you're done, just click the green check mark. To start the motion simulation, click the green play button on the top of the timeline. I only ran the motion simulation for about 5 seconds, but that should have been enough for you to see the movement of the wheel up and down. So now the question is, how do we actually look at a plot of how this wheel is moving with time? To add a plot, just click the plot button up here above the timeline, and this will bring up a menu where you can select whatever results you want to view. There's a large number of things to select for in the drop down menus here everything from displacement and forces to momentum, power, and energy. 
if you give your models weights or if you include friction or forces it's very easy to get some good graphs out of here that will tell you a lot about the forces going through your models. In this case I'm going to select other quantities. Below that I'm going to select pitch, yaw, and roll. And then after playing around a little bit I found out that roll is actually what we're looking for here related to the tire. If I click on the tire it will bring it up here Roll is going to be about the red axis, which you can see right here, and that basically means that the roll value is going to be the change in the camber for this tire as the suspension moves up and down. Click the green check mark, and up will pop a graph of the roll and how it changes with respect to time. Here you can see the oscillation in the motor and this is actually the change in roll so we're starting at zero and then gaining 1.5 degrees in camber at our maximum wheel travel remember that we already started with one degree of static camber so this actually represents one degree on the scale of true camber and this would be two and a half degrees of camber that's about it for today's video on motion analysis but i'd like everybody to just be aware of how powerful this tool really is Using some of these, you can add springs, dampers, forces, cams, gravity, and even friction. And many of these will produce amazing results, and you can perform some pretty intricate analyses on the motion of bodies in very complicated systems. Unfortunately, there's just so many tools here that I'm not able to cover everything in one video. I'd like to do a follow-up video, so please, if you have a suggestion for what you'd like to see me perform with motion analysis, please send me an email. Also, I highly recommend you check out the motion tutorials as they provide some good information on using some of these other tools and aspects of motion analysis. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, send me an email at sfalkner at solidworks.com, and I look forward to hearing from some of you about what you'd like to see in a future motion video.